This is Mountaintop History, a podcast produced by the Thomas Jefferson Foundation at Monticello. Mountaintop History brings forward meaningful stories from this historic home and plantation, from the past and from the present. My name is Kyle Chattleton. And I'm Olivia Brown. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll learn something new. In the history of the United States for 1796, James Thompson Callender wrote, quote, The more that a nation knows about the mode of conducting its business, the better chance has that business of being properly conducted. His writings as a journalist and political writer were consistently partisan throughout his career, and much of Callender's modern legacy stems from a series of newspaper articles he wrote alleging that Thomas Jefferson had children with an enslaved woman he owned named Sally Hemings. Callender's early career did not even begin in the United States. He was born in Scotland and worked as a clerk in Edinburgh, where he first wrote political pamphlets. His 1793 pamphlet called The Political Progress of Britain was a brutal attack on British institutions and was outlawed in Great Britain the same year it was published. Callender, wanted on charges of sedition against the British government, fled Great Britain and arrived in Philadelphia in May of 1793. Apparently, James Callender's criticisms were not reserved for the British government, however. After moving to the United States, he began publishing articles and pamphlets about elements of the United States Constitution and electoral process. Callender did not see the new government of the United States as actually democratic, and he criticized the fact that neither the Senate nor the president was directly elected by the people. National leaders were not safe from Callender's attacks. He publicly criticized the politics of George Washington, John Adams, John Jay, and Alexander Hamilton, most of whom were notable members of the Federalist Party. James Callender lost his job as a congressional reporter at the Philadelphia Gazette, and his political pamphlets then began supporting the Democratic-Republican Party. Thomas Jefferson first began reading James Callender's work when Callender was still living in Europe. They eventually met once Callender was living in the United States. After Callender began taking up for the Democratic-Republican cause, Jefferson helped secure him a position at the Aurora, a Democratic-Republican newspaper. He published a pamphlet called The History of the United States for 1796, and in it reported on the affair between Alexander Hamilton and Maria Reynolds, a married woman. He continued his anti-federalist attacks, and his pamphlet The Prospect Before Us led to his prosecution under the Alien and Sedition Acts, passed in 1798. His attacks on Hamilton only paled, in comparison to what he wrote about then-sitting president John Adams. He said Adams was, quote, mentally deranged and spoke of Adams' plans to crown himself king and bring a monarchy to the new United States. For this, Callender was fined $200 for his salacious ratings and sentenced to spend nine months in jail. When elected president, Thomas Jefferson pardoned anyone jailed under Adams' Sedition Acts, including James Callender. So, upon his release in 1801, Callender expected some sort of reward from Jefferson for his published remarks about Jefferson's biggest political opponents. Callender expressed his desire to be appointed as Richmond's postmaster general, but President Jefferson did not oblige. Jefferson saw Callender as now too radical of a figure, one he was no longer willing to throw his support behind. To James Monroe, Jefferson wrote, quote, I am really mortified at the base ingratitude of Callender. It presents human nature in a hideous form. Jefferson's rejection of Callender's request led Callender to join with a Federalist newspaper editor named Henry Pace, to attack both parties in the United States. The series of articles that emerged beginning on September 1st, 1802, are the first recorded link between the names Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings. 
In these articles, Callender claimed that Jefferson fathered children with Sally Hemings. He wrote, quote, there is not an individual in the neighborhood of Charlottesville who does not believe the story and not a few who know it. There was much debate over the allegations and neither Jefferson nor his family publicly commented on the claims at the time. Based on the combination of documentary, oral history, and DNA evidence, we know today that Jefferson did father at least six children with Sally Hemings, a woman he enslaved and owned on his plantation at Monticello. Four of those children, Beverly, Harriet, Madison, and Eston Hemings, lived to be adults and were among the few enslaved people Thomas Jefferson freed. It was after this that Callender's life spiraled quickly. He was known to drink excessively, and on December 20th, 1802, after a fight with George Hay, a defense lawyer who had represented him in the past, Callender ended his work with Pace and the Recorder newspaper as well. On July 17th, 1803, his alcoholism won out. In a state of drunkenness, Callender drowned in the James River, and his life came to a tragic end. He tried to make amends for his past through a posthumous letter, but no mention was ever made about his remarks on Thomas Jefferson, Sally Hemings, or the children they had together. This has been another episode of Mountaintop History, a collaboration podcast between WTJU and the Thomas Jefferson Foundation. Join us for new episodes every two weeks on Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and the Virginia Audio Collective. To learn more about Monticello or to plan your next trip, visit us online at monticello.org.